I'm late as fuck, but I'm here. I'm here, though. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. What's going on, you guys? This be your boy, Scotty. Fresh. Back from New Jersey. Got home like a couple of hours ago. Had to get myself a little bit of rest. Had to take me a shower to get myself refreshed and stop, you know, get that airline up off of me. And, you know, get ready for the ca get camera ready. You know what I'm saying? That's what I had to do. So, um, let's just get into the video because y'all have waited when? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. five days for this. Five fucking days. And I feel horrible. But y'all know I was on vacation. Not in a much needed vacation at that. So, let's just get into it. So, we pick up what we left off last week. When, um, Jasmine came down to Georgia Prune's grand opening after party. And Georgia Prune called herself reading Jasmine in front of every damn body. So, Tierra and Jasmine meet up with Just Britain to fill her in on the T as to what happened between Jasmine and Georgia Prune. So, you know, Jasmine feels humiliated. She feels embarrassed because basically Georgia Prune read the fuck out of her, supposedly, in front of everybody. And, um, you know, Tierra was like, well, at this point, you're going to have to give her some time to heal because, you know, at the end of the day, you are the one that caused them to be in the situation that they're in. But that's the point, though, Tierra. That's what we've been trying to tell your Aryan wannabe ass from the very motherfucking beginning. Georgia Prune needs time. Why the fuck are you telling this girl to go talk to her anyway? Like, or who raised you? Like, why the fuck would she be even talking to this girl any goddamn way? You know what I'm saying? Like, who, who, and who would tell somebody to go talk to the girl? That was stupid all together. I don't know what the fuck point Tierra was trying to fucking prove, but that shit was stupid as fuck. Why the hell would you go tell her to go talk to Georgia Prune? The woman don't want to talk to her. She got every reason not to want to. She already fucked the woman husband and even gave her damn children another sibling they didn't even ask for. What the fuck are you thinking? Why would you tell her to do that? So, at the end of the day, you know, um, just Brittany said, you know, after I just gotten to know Jasmine, I'm team Jasmine, and I don't give a fuck who got a problem with it, girl. No one knows you. No one gives a fuck about you. Not even your own damn hometown. And on top of that, you probably won't be back next season. Like, sit your tangerine, clementine hair wearing ass the fuck down. Like, you're doing too much sis. But anyway. So... Everybody gets ready to go to the little dude ranch, you know what I'm saying? And um, the next thing you know, Carly was like, oh my gosh, Sean is on the bus. It's going to be so boring. And I'm like, Carly, baby, you in your mid to late 40s, why the fuck do you act like that? Like, really, you're like, why do you even act like that? Why do you do the things you do? I don't understand. Like, you really need to grow the fuck up. Like, seriously, like, my, you almost my mama age. You're not that far from her age. My mother, like, 52, I think, 51 or 52. You are, like, because I think Mimi 48. So you got to be in between 46 and 47 because y'all were good friends back in the gap in L.A. And you was in that video with Next, I Still Love You, back in 97 or 98. Bitch, you in your 40s. So don't try to play me. You in your motherfucking late 40s at that, bitch. Stop. You need to grow up and stop it with the fuck shit, okay? And Sean just went the fuck in on her ass just like he needed to with his sexy, unsexy ass, okay? And I'm saying that because he ain't got no face, but that body is on point as it always has been. So, uh, yeah, but Carly just need to grow the fuck up. So, Kirk and Rashida, they wake up and, you know, they talk about what happened and, you know, all Georgia Prune can say was, you know, all, it just, it was, it wasn't easy for me, you know, it wasn't easy just to think about everything that she did to me, everything that she did to our family, like, everything that she ever put me through, you know, it just took so much up out of me and I just, I had to release and I just had to do this and I had to do that. Rashida girl bye because at the end of the day everybody prays on her and I get it. You know, they want to see the side chick be, get taken down, you know what I'm saying? As she as we all should. But my thing of it is, yeah, she read her in front of everybody, but I mean, I didn't really feel like she deserved a standing ovation. Now she handled it classy. She didn't try to fight or pull her hair, you know, drag her across the floor. I can give her props on that. She handled it like a lady. But I mean, I'm not giving her no props about that. At the end of the day, you know, 
she told, I do understand about the maliciousness and the things that Jasmine, the, the other shit that Jasmine did in regards to this whole situation, like posting somebody's kid on Instagram. That's some shit that you, that you just don't do, girl. Like, what the fuck make you think that that shit was okay? It just wasn't okay, bitch. Like, why did you think it was? But, okay, so, you know, it is what it is. But, I just, I don't know. I don't know, y'all. Like, I just can't give Rashida anything. Like, she doesn't give me anything. She drains me. She The way she looks just drains me. Like, I just can't fuck with Rashida. And I'm over her and I'm over Kirk. And I need for them to get something else to do besides making Rashida look dumb than she already does. Because the moment she accused K. Michelle of lying about Mip Hits putting his hands on her, she looked like the dummy from that season on down. So, ain't nothing she could do to make me change my mind about her ass. She right there with Phaedra Parks. But, um, anyway... So they all sit out there, they eating, and um, you know, Tokyo brings up the fact that, you know, she hate that she missed Rashida's grand opening, but she had a mishap before she came in. Here goes Spice. Mishap! I'm like, here come this auntie looking bitch. Okay, auntie garlic powder, but okay. But anyway, so they start talking about what happened between the two of them. And my thing about Spice is the fact that, that bitch just cannot own up to the fact that she was fucking wrong. She was being petty. She was being disrespectful. And Tokyo's whole attitude was based on the way she acted. Like, I just can't get over seasoning salt sitting up here acting like... She was innocent in the situation. You're not innocent. And whether Carly messy ass told you something about what Tokyo supposedly said or not, that was not the way to handle that shit. Because when she came in front of you, she was not disrespecting you. She came to you like a woman. You want to start taking shots at her weight and then you want to ask the question as to why did you throw the purse at me? Why did you throw the purse at me? Because she said this and she said that. It doesn't matter what the fuck a bitch said, bitch. At the end of the day, you were wrong. You are the reason why you got a purse swung at your ass. Like, real talk. And then, you know... Tokyo keeps saying, I don't have a problem with you. I don't have a problem with you. I don't have a problem with you. My issue is with Tobias. I don't have a problem with you. She keeps telling your stupid ass that. And all you want to do is keep talking and be hot-headed and try to be a big-ass bully. Like, bitch, you coming for somebody. Wait. But at the end of the day, you're not that fucking far from it, bitch. Okay? You're not that far. And then what I don't like is the fact that you got people out there that just cannot see past their like for someone. Just because you like someone don't mean you got to be down with them every time they wrong. Spice is fucking wrong. It ain't got nothing to do with Tokyo being her size. It really don't. At the end of the day, my whole point with this is the fact that it wasn't warranted. Whether we, okay, Tokyo is a big bitch. We all know that. We all see that. What's your fucking point? At, my thing is, the girl was not being disrespectful to Paprika. Paprika came in being disrespectful. The moment she saw Tokyo, she laughed. She laughed because that was her fucking competition. She sized her up. She was looking for a moment to be disrespectful. Tokyo did not disrespect her. She disrespected Tokyo. And that's why she got a purse thrown at her ass. And then when she called her a bitch, she want to throw a plate of food at her, try to run up on her, and all of that stuff. And I'm like, Spice is doing the absolute most. The absolute most. First of all, she look like an auntie. Number two, she be wearing them ugly ass wigs. Number three, she's just annoying. Like, she always inserting herself in every fucking thing, okay? And it's just ridiculous. And then she calls Sierra hypocrite. First of all, she go and tell Tokyo that I was wrong for, for saying, for calling her fat. And then she want to tell me, she called as the leader and told her that Tokyo was wrong for swinging a purse at me. She's a hypocrite. That's not being a hypocrite. Because at the end of the day... You were wrong for disrespecting her, but she was also wrong for swinging the fucking purse. Although, I get why she swung it, but that was also not the correct way to handle it. So, at the end of the day, she ain't doing nothing but telling the truth. Like, bitch, both of y'all were wrong. You cranked it up, and she gave some gas, and both of y'all drove the motherfucking SUV. That's just what the fuck happened, so y'all can just get over it. And that's the little girl, bitch, really? Like... Why are you so amped up and why the fuck you trying to come for Sierra? Now you want to do all this extra shit and come for her knowing that that girl will whoop your ass. And then on top of that, you know, she talking about, bitch, it's whatever, blah, blah, blah. And, and Sierra was just as calm as I don't know what. Like, Estelita, who the fuck are you? Like, when, when, when was you ever tough like that? Like, I'm just trying to figure out, like, 
girl, why are you doing the most? Like, go somewhere and sit the fuck down. Stop trying to tur turn up because this more than salt having ass bitch is sitting up here turning the fuck up for no goddamn reason. And then the next thing, you know, Sierra, not Sierra, the next thing, you know, Esther Lee and BK getting into it, which BK looked like a damn dummy getting up in female shit. And then Sierra feel like Carly just being a messy ass bitch, which she is, and she questioning her friendship with her, as she should, because Carly is messy as fuck, and she really don't understand that. And so, at the end of it all, you know, BK get up in Carly's face. So next thing you know, here go Carly. I got, I got my own shit going on. Okay? I got something going on with my dad. Okay? Bitch, don't use your daddy as an excuse to, to deflect the situation. You got all this shit started. And now that, you know what I'm saying? You didn't, you, you got all, you got this fire started. Now you need to stay till it burn out, but you can't stay till it fucking burn out. You got to use your daddy as an excuse to try to break down the crime and get some sympathy when you got all this shit going. Bitch, fuck that shit. That shit never would have worked with me. Yeah, her daddy going through some shit, but bitch, that ain't got nothing to do with what the fuck you just did. Now you want to go over here and come crying and jocking. I just want everybody to get along. I just want everybody. You don't want everybody to get along shit, Carly, because if you did, you wouldn't be keeping up all that mess. You constantly keep it up. Honestly, and I normally live for your mess, but this mess that you created with Tokyo and Spice wasn't even necessary. It was fucked up. It was wrong. You was disgusted, busted, and couldn't be trusted. Bottom line. So then, later on, Tokyo and Melissa have a heart-to-heart. -heart. And Melissa just want to know why she hit Spice with the purse. And Tokyo was like, you just don't know me the way that everybody else does. So you know what I'm saying? You and Ty cool, but I'm not going to tell... I'm cool with you and Ty, but I'm not going to go back and tell Ty what the fuck you said. I'm not going to tell motherfucking tell what you said. I'm not going to tell what Ty said to you because I'm cool with the both of y'all, so I'm not going to do that. Carly cool with me and Spice, so why the fuck would she go back and miss word what I say and go back and run it back to motherfucking Spice but she claimed that she want to make things right with me. And on top of that, I've been trying to grow. I've been trying to keep from whooping bitches ass and bitches won't let me make it. That's why... My attitude is the way it is. And I understand her completely. Completely. She said she disrespected me. She said hurtful, disrespectful things about me. And I love myself. I don't give a fuck how much I weigh. I love myself and that's just what it is. And I do believe that she loves herself. And I do commend her for being comfortable in her own motherfucking skin. Sometimes, you know, she even gave me some damn inspiration. Because, you know, sometimes I'm not comfortable in my own skin sometimes. But, you know, it is what it is. So, we get into... At the end, when Rashida gets Spice and Tokyo to talk before everybody else come. Even in this conversation, Spice don't know how to talk like a fucking adult. She don't know how. So I'm just sitting up here like, why is this bitch here? Why Why is Tokyo even trying to talk to her? But they finally came to an agreement that they're just going to let it go and try to enjoy the rest of the trip and they ain't got no problem. She said, just don't call me a bitch. And, and Tokyo said, well, I say bitch and that's just what it is. So just call me a bitch back. Tokyo, I'm on 100% with you because I say bitch all the time. I don't give a fuck who get offended. I don't mean, I tell everybody from the jump. I say bitch all the time, please don't take no offense to it. I don't mean no harm when I call you a bitch. Trust me. With that being said, this is my review on Love and Hip Hop. Let me get ready for Basketball Wives and I'm outie!